says that he gives us life and lap more abundantly. However, the enemy came to do what? Steal, kill, kill, steal, and destroy. So in all of this, this stuff we want to hold on to, this thing that we have to gain control of, that we have to maintain ownership of, is it worth it? Is it worth it? Jesus says here through the writer of this psalm, he says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Trust also to him, and he shall bring it to pass. Commit thy way. That's your will, your life. You wonder why people have so many problems and they can't ever seem to find their way because they're still trying to drive the boat. And they're blind. They're blind. They can't see. They can't see the pitfalls in front of them. They can't see the waterfall in front of them. They can't see the thing that is standing before them that wants to destroy them. But they're determined to drive the boat, by golly. It's time to let go of the wheel. It's time to let go. And commit your way to His way. To commit your existence to Him. That's what we need to do. That's what we all need to do. Is stop the fighting. Stop the fighting. In this passage here, it's about stopping the fighting with God. If we go back to verse 1, he says this, Fret not thyself because of evildoers, neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. See, we often come to God with this turmoil in our life because we're struggling watching other people do better than we are or get away with stuff that we're not able to or not having the difficulties we're having. And we're, we're kind of irritated with God over this whole thing going on. But then he tells us, look, trust in the Lord and do good. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You delight in me. You commit your way to me and I'll take care of it. And it's no different in the New Testament. It's the same gospel. The same word. The same point that he makes here, he makes in Matthew. And he makes all through the New Testament. Trust God. Do good. I'll take care of you. Trust God. Do good. I'll take care of you. How many people here have needs? I have needs. We all have needs. We have, need. we have kids. We got needs. We have, we have the need for our kids to know him. Amen? They have to choose. I can't choose for my little one. She, at some point, will have to come face to face with that choice to choose God or not choose God. To me, that's a need. The need for me. Some of us have spouses that aren't believers. That's a need. The need to see that resolved. That's a need. Do you know he wants to meet that need? Delight yourself in me, and I will give you the desires of your heart. Do you want to see your husband saved? Delight in God. Do you want to see your kids saved? Delight in God. Do you want to see food on your table? Trust God. Do you want to see health in your family? Trust God. It all comes back to the very simple thing of trusting God and putting Him first. And don't look anywhere else that this world has to offer. Because that leads to damnation. And that's scary for a lot of people. Because they'd rather trust welfare. They'd rather trust the government. They'd rather trust something they can physically touch. And trust a God they can't see. And that's where it comes to you guys. Because as God has touched your life. 
if you're willing to share with others how he's touched your life, it makes him real. He's real. You hear what I'm saying? He's a real, tangible, physical, alive, living, powerful God That's right. that has moved for you. That's right. And he says simply, tell them of the good things that God has done for you. Now, if they reject that, they're going to reject his word anyway. You see what I'm saying? But if they hear you, then maybe they'll hear his word. It's one other scripture I wanted to share briefly, and then I promise to wrap up here. It's Revelation 12. And this struck me as we were talking earlier. Oh, praise God. I want you all to hear this. I want you to hear this. Verse 10, he says, And I, had, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which has accused them before our God day and night. Amen. And let me tell you something right here. Let me tell you the power you have without ever setting foot in seminary or getting a doctor's degree in theology. And they overcame him, how? By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Who here? wants victory over the challenges in their lives. You will overcome it by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and you'll love not your life unto the death. And that may be for some of us a physical death, but every day we die to self. Amen? Yeah. Every day we're told to mortify our flesh. Right? That's right? Every day. See, it's easy to say, thank you, Jesus, for the blood. Amen. Thank you for the blood. And it's easy to tell people about, Jesus did this for me, but boy, when it comes to the dying to flesh and loving not your life to the death, that's where the rubber hits the road. And it's time we let the rubber hit the road and we run over that SOB that's been giving us so much trouble. You hear what I'm saying? Because he needs to be cast down and run over and trodden over foot or trodden underfoot. It's better. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they love not their life unto the death. We talk about repentance, Brad. That's repentance. That's, it. <laughs> That's repentance. Jesus' blood. What he's done. And then surrender. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for this evening. Lord, and I ask that you just work on all the hearts, Lord.